talking about the Church of Thyatira today. And one of the things that we want to begin to talk about um, is stopping things from operating um, in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming. Glory is coming. God wants to operate. He wants to move in the midst of God's people. And one of the things that we have to do is stand on guard. Um, as church leaders, as we are called as watchmen. We are called to be gatekeepers. We are called to stand uh, on the wall, be a watchman. Uh, we had recently talked about um, Genesis, where Adam was put in the garden. And he was called to basically cultivate and guard the garden. And so what we want to talk about is the importance of standing on guard because as church leaders and being watchmen, we are cultivating atmosphere. And our responsibility is to, as we're cultivating an atmosphere, we're looking to cultivate the people of God and so that they can produce fruit to, for the, uh, and have a uh, pure place, an unadulterated place for giftings to operate. Now, one of the things about a true prophetic move and for the glory of God, when it operates, it becomes a magnet for demonic spirits. And so um, the enemy will begin to uh, try to infiltrate because one is he wants to minimize what God wants to maximize. Mm. I want to say that again. He wants to minimize what God wants to maximize. And so because everything that God does has uh, multiplication, everything that God has brings addition, it brings increase, his word does not return void, the enemy comes to operate to twist, taint, pervert, pollute, because he, he, if he can get into the mix of it, eventually uh, he will get, get the people off course. It's not that God gets tainted or that the glory is tainted it is that the people of god if they allow false doctrine unclean spirits allow for the wrong things to get into the atmosphere it will actually begin to settle into the heart begin to settle into the mind and eventually the flesh will follow what is in the mind and in the heart of man amen wow. and so what we want to talk about is the importance of shutting down spirits that will begin to uh, try to manifest, especially uh, knowing that um, the glory of God is manifesting, the kabod of God, the heaviness or the weightiness, along with revelation mm -hmm. and the authority to operate uh, from the kingdom to begin to drive out demonic forces. And one of the things the enemy will always try to do, especially when a house begins to move in deliverance, he will begin to try to uh, penetrate that ministry and the life of the leadership mm -hmm. to uh, bring an accusation. This is, You know this is one of my big things about the enemy looking for room to bring accusation. Now there are lots of ways the devil will move um, in our lives to bring accusation. Obviously, the uh, element of sin is a very obvious uh, place. He is the accuser of the brethren, and he brings a slander before God. If we're disobedient, we're in blatant sin, and we know we're in sin, then especially the area of that sin, we are not able to help bring conviction or deliverance into the life of people who are operating on the same level. So if we have familiar spirits in operation, unclean spirits in operation, uh, they will work to hijack a ministry, hijack leadership uh, to move and operate in people hmm. because what happens is it will stop deliverance because unclean spirits, unclean cannot cast out unclean. Okay. Amen. Holy, unholy cannot convict you to be holy. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy wants to operate to bring uh, cloudiness into an atmosphere to pollute perspectives. Uh, one of the things is that you always see me, I'll write it periodically. Purity, a whole, uh, perversion, uh, what does it do? A per, uh, purity perceives properly. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you're pure, you can perceive properly, but perversion pollutes perspective. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
So if the enemy can get uh, even a seed of perversion, a seed or unclean thoughts or even anything uh, to begin to penetrate or infiltrate a ministry, it's a seed. We have to remember it's seed. So prophecy is seed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Prophecy, when uh, he tells, uh, Paul tells Timothy to war over the prophecies. And so we are to be warring and fighting for the right thing and to resist the wrong thing from coming in because God wants, as the word says, one plants, one waters, but what God brings, the increase. So we're going to be reading out of Revelation chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 18. Does anybody feel like to read a little or do you all want me to read? Sure. All right, just go ahead and... Um, 2.18. Yeah, we're going to start in 2.18 okay. and stop at verse 20, and then we'll go on from there in a little bit. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. And know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. All right, there we go. All right, so when we read that, it says that he has a few things against the church. All right? Mm -hmm. So we we're talking about guarding the atmosphere, guarding the church as leadership and as upcoming leaders. We have a responsibility to understand that what we allow to operate in a ministry affects the people that are in the ministry. And so as watchmen, we have to make sure, number one, that we're holy, that we are clean, uh, number two, we have to make sure that whatever comes into a ministry and the atmosphere, uh, it must, if it's trying to operate, it must line up with the Word of God. It must line up with the fruit of God. It must line up with the vision, the intent of God um, for that house, amen, for that time, for that whatever it is. It has to be holy, has to be pure, has to be uh, all of those elements. There's so many things we can put Mm -mm. into place but he says that he, he has that against it says in the king james you suffer all right you suffer or you permit it literally means to allow one to do as they wish without restraint to leave them alone wow. literally and he's telling the pastor of the church you have allowed this to move mm -hmm. and operate unrestrained. Wow. Literally, to leave it alone, you can do what you want without any accountability. You leave it alone as not to bother it. Now, one of the problems is, is with the Jezebel spirit, like Leviathan, a lot of times people do not want to enter into a spiritual warfare or conflict with somebody that has those strong spirits. Mm. Because once you lay your hand to the battle, it is going to be a, a wrestling match. Because when a person has those kind of strongholds, uh, it, it becomes a battle. And a lot of times, leadership will think, uh, it's, it's, I just don't want to mess with it, so God, you'll deal with it. But the reality is, God called us, just like he called Adam in the garden, to cultivate and guard the garden. God has called church leadership to guard the house of the Lord. Amen. And so God will hold us accountable for what we leave alone. So now we see there's things that we have to... So because you didn't deal with it, God says, I have an issue with you for not dealing with the things that you should have been dealing with in your authority. Hmm. So there are things that we think, oh, it'll take care of itself in time or it'll be all right. No, it won't be okay. Because when we let something come in that is perverted, twisted, wow. tainted, it brings infection and it will begin to speak. And what is the next thing it says? Is that seduce, come on now, mm -hmm. all right? What did it do? Seduce 
Who? Come on, somebody. To teach and seduce my servants. So now we're not even just talking about uh, even young believers, or we're talking about individuals who are called by God, individuals who are anointed, chosen. He says, these are my servants. That's, they, these are my bondsmen. It's, a, it's, a, it's about one who gives himself to another's will. Those who are in service to be used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause amongst hmm. humanity. So these are individuals who have basically devoted themselves. They, have const- they were giving themselves over for the master's use to be a servant unto the Lord. And he says, these are my servants. So now we have to have an understanding that the enemy, uh, he is going to try. So here the, the, the pastor is letting these things operate. And now the enemy is trying to get in because he wants to corrupt the entire church. It's not just a, a good enough if he can, you know, yes, he'll try to get a leadership to fall, a pastor to fall. But he is not going to stop there. Smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. But he's not going to stop there. He wants to put seed, especially, let's say, a leadership has been doing good for a season, sowing good seed, been pouring into the people. The enemy knows that that good seed of God will reproduce. So he has to sow a demonic seed. Mm. The enemy wants to sow a demonic seed to try to, to throw the servants of the Lord. So here you have a pastor that is over servants, had servants in the church, and he permits this woman who calls herself a prophetess to be left un- uh, unrestrained, mm-hmm. unchecked, you're just going forth, and now we see the, the spirit of prophecy coming to John, letting the church know he's writing these down because it, uh, the word of the Lord has got to get to the church to let them know, listen, what you're doing is you're causing contamination. You're allowing this to happen. I have, the, I have this against you because these are my servants and you're not being a guard. You're not being a watchman now over my servants. You should even come to the point where you're protecting the word that's going into their ear gate. Mm. You should come to a point now that you're guarding even what spirit has influence in my servants. You're a pastor. You're an apostle. You're a prophet. I put you as an angel, which is a messenger, over the church to be a light. And now you will let this woman called Jezebel, and we don't have to stop there. There are all kinds of spirits that can come and operate in people, begin to move in a, in a realm of operation mm-hmm. that brings contamination yes. brings perversion okay you cannot allow people to come in that have different listen we can have variation of doctrine and i understand that some people are pre-millennial me be millennial and uh mid-trib and you know I, a millennial b millennial i understand all of that and there's some uh very fine lines in understanding there's something but there's some doctrine that you just can't uh uh brush under the rug and say there's you know there's just some things that this is the way it is doctrinally. This is the way we are being taught systematically. And so for you to bring another doctrine and be a leader and try to teach that is going to try to work to undo everything that the ministry has been yes. uh, sowing. And we've been preaching and teaching to people based on our understanding of Scripture. And if God would say otherwise that what our understanding is is incorrect and at that point in time we will repent apologize for uh misinterpretation misinformation if you of of our interpretation but not an intentional or a deliberate uh desire to uh mislead or or uh, guide the people of god in a wrong direction Mm -hmm. and so god weighs that a little bit different than intentional and purposeful destruction uh, towards the body of Jesus Christ. And so God wants this spirit out of the church. He does not want its contamination, her, her claws, because the false prophetic will uh, cause an individual 
to get off course. Amen? Amen. And so that spirit of Jezebel, when it operates, uh, poisons. And look, look, let's just look at a few things. And so to commit uh, fornication, all right? So seduce the servants and to commit fornication. Now, the word there is uh, 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 it's, it's porneo, which literally means to prostitute one's body to lust after another. All right. So it gives a, it means to have unlawful relationship to commit fornication and metaphorically it means to commit idolatry, to worship idols. And so the very thing uh, that this woman was operating in caused based on something they say, well, OK, was it literal uh, uh, sexual or unclean relationship or were they bowing down and worshiping idols? So it, it, you know, either way, Both. you know, so it, it, it's an operation here that wow. is causing individuals to actually bow down to something other than the Lord God Almighty. Yep. So if you, if, you, if you give over to lust, you're actually serving another God. That's you're I mean. serving yourself, yeah, yeah. you're serving your flesh. So you yourself, if you give over to lust, you make yourself an idol because God said, be holy as I am holy. Right. And so I'm going to indulge, I'm going to give over to this thing because I want it. So you elevated yourself above the word. Any, anytime we elevate ourselves over the word of God, we just made ourselves an idol. And, and that is a hard thing for people to hear, but we have to dethrone ourselves so that Jesus can stay enthroned on our hearts. Amen? Mm -hmm. We got to... That's why Paul said, I die daily. So here's this operation, this seduction uh, that's in operation, and it's seducing the servants of the Lord to literally lead them in error, okay? And it, one part of it is to lead astray from the path of virtue, all right? To sever or fall away from truth, to wander or roam away from the path that is right, to cause to stray. So when we're looking, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. One of the things as leadership we have a responsibility to do is to guard because we don't want to give opportunity for anyone to move or operate that will stray people off of the path. Amen. Amen. People will come and go out of a church. Amen. The, a, a, a body. But the kingdom is one. And so what is being released uh, here in, in this house or whatever ministry, if someone's listening, you overseeing a church, whatever's being released, sh they may leave your ministry, but they should never leave the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. A person may leave the ministry, but they should never leave the kingdom. They should never leave Jesus. They should never leave worshiping God. And that's what these spirits do is eventually perversion and contamination sets in so hard it causes because once a person falls in immorality uh they have a very hard time uh especially with certain lusts lust of the eyes lust of the flesh it is hard to kill that beast and eventually they just give up and say well i can't live holy uh you know and i, I just can't do this and i'm not going to go to church and be a hypocrite uh, and so they just quit going to church altogether stop serving the lord no and then you have a seared conscience because you have the knowledge of the truth, but you don't have the ability now or the power to live the truth. Mm. And so it causes a very grievous heart, a very uh, seared mind, and that's not what God wants. So this is why whenever we see familiar spirits, unclean spirits, lust spirits, we're not looking to hate on the person. We're not looking to you know, drive a stake and like we're you know, vampire slayers. We're, we are looking to try to communicate and convey with individuals to let them know that you're operating on a frequency that is not the Holy Spirit. You're moving in a way. Now, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus say? He said, listen, it, it wasn't enough just to give warning to the church. He says, after all of that, they, they're sacrificing unto idols, so they're committing fornication and, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Okay? So it's a twofold element there. All right, so we see that, the, okay, if you're reading in the King James, uh, you'll see that the word um, is synonymous. There's two elements of fornication and idols. We, we could talk about that later. It says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication. 
and she repented not. So now here we have individuals that are in the church. They're operating, prophesying, laying hands. They're bringing contamination, refusing. Now it says, I gave her. So that means the Holy Spirit was working, even though the pastor let this individual do whatever it was that they felt like they could do or they wanted to do. The Spirit of God was working to try to bring a conviction because mm -hmm. he said, I gave her space right. to repent. She didn't repent. Mm -hmm. All right, so behold, all right, you don't want to repent? Now, Jesus says, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So we see now that, that it says adultery. That lets you know that this Spirit will cause men to fall whatever level of seduction lust that it mm. operates in because adultery means whoever uh it says i will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery he doesn't say those that commit fornication with her he says those that commit adultery literally meaning these are married men that are now falling over jezebel so she's not just now uh satisfied to have one partner, she's now operating in a level of lust and moving in an operation that she's contaminating the church. And a lot of times what happens is this type of spirit will alienate, it will isolate, it will keep individuals separate. So individuals won't know that uh, this type of spirit is friends with multiple individuals. It will strategically line up times, keep people separated, it will lie, it will, it will conceal, it, it's like a chameleon, it can, can veil itself right before your eyes. But this is why we must pray for the Holy Spirit to bring discernment so that we can sense and discern uh, when individuals have certain types of spirits. Sometimes people can't help but to operate on these levels because that's the level uh, of contamination that's in them. So they operate in what they are. Mm -hmm. All right, so sin is going to operate. And so then if you have spirits in operation, uh, it's go they're going to continue to flow and operate based on their, uh, if you will, fallen, beastie, bestial personality, unregenerate personality. Mm -hmm. And this is where we must offer, and this is where inner healing, it says Jesus offered a moment of repentance to repent, we must offer, once we find out individuals are operating in a certain uh, capacity, you have no choice as a leader but to say, listen, I'm offering you room and a chance to repent. Jesus' first desire is always restoration. Right. Even to the worst, I want to say it again, mm -hmm. even to the worst of operation, even to the point you're destroying, contaminating, polluting the body of Jesus Christ, which is, he says, I am coming for a church without what? Spots or wrinkles. Say it louder. Spot or wrinkles. Amen. So he's coming back for a pure bride. And so you contaminated the bride, but he said, I still give you room. You contaminated my servants, but I still give you room to repent. Wow. All right. Merciful God. So we have to give that space to individuals and give them, just like the Lord, an opportunity to repent. But once you don't repent, once you want to remain unrepentant and judgment begins to operate, there is no other thing uh, we can do but to allow the judgment of the Lord to begin to deal with individuals that perchance maybe after judgment falls. So we're going to go on. It says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication. She repented not. So he says, I'll cast her into a sick, into the bed. And what's it say? Them to commit adultery into great tribulation. All right. So some people are wondering why they're having so many issues and they're having so many problems. Well, maybe you need to look and see who you've been in bed with. All right. Some, some folks getting in bed with spirits. All right. And, and they don't want to admit it. So everything isn't going the way they had hoped. And so the judgment of the Lord falls and he says, I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So he says, listen, this is the judgment that's been released on Jezebel. I want everybody to know 
I know to the when it says the reins, it means down into the innermost part of your bosom, your kidneys, and the heart where your emotions, everything about you, I know why you do what you do, and I judge it. I search it, all right? And then I judge it, and he says, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So he shows them right out. He's telling John to prophesy and letting them know this is Jezebel's judgment. Hmm. All right, here's, here's what's getting ready to happen. Her children are going to die. She didn't want to repent. Uh, literally, sickness and death follow Jezebel. Sickness, disease, death, all of these things where God brings life, God brings healing, God brings purity. Jezebel and unclean spirits, perverse spirits, they bring death, tainting, pollution, and perversion. And God wants those things it, it, to be dealt with. He wants those things to be cut out. And so he's telling the pastor, listen, listen, you slipped up. You let this into the church. You let it operate. And now basically she didn't want to repent. So I have to deal with it. And this is where there are times, though, where there are just things that leadership has to tackle head on. We can't fluff from it. We can't deviate from it. We are called to guard sheep, guard the church, guard the atmosphere, guard the glory, guard the glory. All right. All right. So. But to you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many have not this doctrine which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you no other burden. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nation. He shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they uh, be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the, of the Lord, the Spirit says unto the churches. And so, when we're look, you're looking at that, he says, listen, there are those that have known the depths of Satan. So literally, what Jezebel was releasing in lust was a doctrine. She seduced, she began to release doctrines to the servants of the Lord and they were running around with revelation, all right? And God said, that wasn't revelation from me. That was revelation. Those are depths of Satan. And so because the pollution had gotten so deep, so he lets it be known, he says, look, as many that has not this doctrine, okay, those that don't have the teaching, those that have not in Thyatira been polluted, been perverted, those that have not fornicated, those that have not uh, eaten meat sacrificed to idols, you haven't, you haven't been seduced by this spirit, okay? You haven't known. There are those of you that don't know, have not known the depths of Satan. As they speak, I will put upon you no other burden. What was the burden? He was, he was the burden is holiness. Keep yourself. Stay pure. Stay holy. I'm not going to put any burdens on you, all right? I'm not going to put, uh, except the word that I've already given you. Fight, stay holy, because I called you to rulership status. I called you to rulership position, and I want to use you um, in the nations. Hallelujah. I want to use you uh, to rule. And he says, just as the Father has what? Given to me, I'm going to give to you. I want you, and you're going to rule. And so God has called us to a rule. That was the first thing um, that Adam praised the, the Lamb of God. Adam was called to, to cultivate and guard the garden. And so God has called us to be rulers. And one of the things we have to make sure that as rulers, we are not allowing the enemy free course. Amen? Amen. And that will cause a, us to get charged by the Lord if we allow um, the enemy free course. So what are some of the things that unclean spirits and seducing spirits, Jezebelic spirits, what will they, what will they do? They will come in a, in a false authority, all right? They come as a false prophet, come as, and they're very seductive. 
they use seduction and manipulation to uh, flatter, to get uh, into positions because they want to move in, in uh, realms and levels of leadership and operate as an authority. So it works to hijack a ministry. It works to hijack and undermine leadership. Somewhere, I wonder if uh, the pastor might have fallen with this Jezebel spirit. Mm -hmm. older, older manuscripts, uh, one of the uh, Masoretic texts says, and you suffer your wife Jezebel. Mm -hmm. So there's a very old manuscript that alludes to that the woman was actually the pastor's wife, and the pastor's wife was now moving in this very high level of seduction in the church. And he just sat back like an Ahab and let it happen. Oops. So <laughs> this spirit will cause uh, idolatry. It is very unrepentant. Um, when you confront this type of a spirit, it will tell you, I am sorry if you were offended. It will not say, I'm sorry I offended you. It will not specifically identify with the act of what it has done and so it more along the lines moves with not godly sorrow but it moves in worldly sorrow all right godly sorrow leads unto repentance amen and so it will move with um great worldly sorrow because it's it'll placate oh boo-hoo just like athaliah you know, trees and trees and how are you trying to take my position from me? And it's like, wait a minute, you just killed all of the royal seed to have that position. How's it a treason? You're a murderer. Hmm. It's a very murderous, uh, venomous, poisonous spirit. Yeah. So it moves in false prophecy, false promotion, false doctrines. And one of the things that, that it comes with it is sickness, great tribulation, and death. Anyone that intermingles with uh, that Jezebelic, unclean, seductive, seducing spirit, uh, they will have great uh, trouble. And so there's a lot of different traits that come along with it, along with seduction, along with the false doctrine. Um, it's not very merciful. It's always seeking power and control. Very unloyal, it's treacherous, argumentative, resistant to authority. Has a very strong absence of love, absence of the reverence or the fear of the Lord. It's always fault-finding, it has paranoid delusions. Very ungoverned, cannot be corrected, cannot be directed, will not submit, will not yield. Um, verbally abusive, will intimidate and manipulate individuals to make them feel less than, to make them seem more spiritual, uh, spiritually capable or empowered. Always craving power, position, even material things. Very jealous of others. Um, very domineering. And is very relentless in its pursuit for position. Very dishonest, loves to gossip and loves to hear gossip. Very unchaste sexual appetite. Many times you'll find that an individual with a strong, and it ties in with witchcraft, familiar spirits, unclean spirits. So you'll find out refuses to admit guilt or wrong, loves to take credit for everything, uses people to accomplish its agenda. Very confusing. When you talk with somebody in this kind of position, when you talk, you don't get a straight answer. The sky is red and I saw trees flipping and, and you'll be like, what are you talking about? I saw whirly birds and I saw, you know, you're like, hey, Hey, you want to go and uh, what, 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 are you, what are you trying to say to me? And they, they can't talk. They talk in riddles. <laughs> they confuse themselves because the spirits uh, are always working to be in operation in that person. So the mind of the person uh, a lot of times is under subjection to strong spiritual bondage. Oh, wow. 
Um, one of the things you'll find out is that an individual under this type of a spirit loves to volunteer because it works its way close to leadership and authority. Yeah. Very lying spirit, lies about everything, very cunning. Uh, we'll, if you don't give this person what they want, they'll give you the cold shoulder. They will ignore you until the day when they realize you have something they want or need. Uh, never gives credit, can't show gratitude, criticizes everyone, always has to throw something. If you'd be like, yeah, I went to uh, the ball game and I saw, you know, this amazing play or whatever. Well, I went to a ball game or, you know, um, if you say, I went bowling and I got a 150, you know, that's a low kind of game. But, well, I went bowling I got a 250, you know, you know they always have something to say to make themselves uh, look better. Uh, they have two abilities. For some reason, people will feel like they have to, in their demonic abilities, they know how to draw information. They will get information to use it as uh, manipulation. They will pull and draw on people for information. In the end, it's used as a tool, basically almost like blackmail or to uh, intimidate or manipulate a person into getting what they want. Uh, they will use information as leverage and power. Um, they spiritualize everything. It's very rebellious, will not submit. Very domineering. Everything, uh, they sow a very strong spirit of discord. You can have a very harmonious relationship. You can have uh, five friends that are very close, and then you invite that Jezebel, and the Jezebel will start sowing seed uh, individually in between the five, and the five don't know that this, you know, well, so-and-so told me this, or I saw something with so-and-so. And then when the five come together, there's strong uh, contention. You feel abrasiveness. You don't even know what happened, what shifted. Why is this like this? We were getting along last week, and all of a sudden this week, it feels like we stepped into Antarctica together. And, and it's mm -hmm. because this spirit sows discord mm -hmm. and because it does not have genuine relationship with people wow. because the person is unable emotionally to have genuine relationship, it, it must maintain a, a role of, 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 of its illegitimate authority most of the time to stay in a position, but it can't connect with people so it hates when it sees people genuinely connected in love right. it hates That's it awful it hates it <laughs> and so it works to sow seeds of discord and strife um uses the element of surprise loves to do pop-up surprise uh meetings and without knowledge of you knowing they're just going to pop up on you they're going to attack you at any moment you don't know when they're liable to show up Sorry, it's in my notes right here from slides from six years ago. And I'm just kind of reading along here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the name of Jesus. Okay. Uh, demands attention. Very vengeful. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But a Jezebel, a witchcraft spirit, always looks. It could be six years later, figure out a way to get back at a person for a wrongdoing. Does not forgive. Is not forgiving in heart or spirit. Hmm. And holds a grudge forever. Uh, it has a role or an ability to uh, make you look like what it is. It will sow words to make, paint a picture to other people that you are the one with mental instability. You're the psychotic. You're crazy. You're lo the loopy one. You're the crazy one. And people for a season because it plays the victim will side with a Jezebel. And one of the worst things that will happen in the end, if people who side with Jezebel or a witchcraft, familiar, unclean spirit, uh, when they find the truth, they don't even, they're don't they devastated because they will have followed a lie many times, some wow. will, for, for months and years, believing a lie. And the spirit works strong enough that when it says something, it brings division and it will alienate and isolate the person that heard the word from the person being Lord, accused. Lord, and Lord. they will never go and question the person to say, um, I, I heard this. Is this true? And so the spirit maintains a very strong leverage in the spirit over individuals. All right. So 
Once again, it works in isolation. It likes to separate people. Wow. Won't get in the individuals a lot of times that a Jezebel spirit works with. They will not all ever be in the same room together. Okay? That's how that spirit works. Good, good, good. good all right. Good, good stuff. Um, we'll use disapproval to manipulate. So it, it uses mm -hmm. its sense of spiritual authority and power. It's false revelation. And when people will look at a Jezebel wanting because a lot of times if it's people that have been wounded hurt rejected mm -hmm. uh and they're looking for approval that's the nature of humanity people have been wounded hurt rejected by family or whatever they want approval we were made to receive approval but what jezebel does is uses approval when it's uh in grooming its subjects that spirit to de develop dependency and so as soon as it says i don't approve uh, the person will go double and triple mode of working to win the approval of that individual. Mm -hmm. Where God gives unconditional love, uh, you know, we, we, we're not works-oriented, and even though we do receive blessing for works, love is never a works-oriented uh, fruit. Mm -hmm. Hear that? Yes. Love is not works-oriented fruit. We get rewards for what we do right. We get rewards and blessings. But God's love is constant and it's consistent and it's unconditional. Now, he cha chastens those he loves. Amen. And so, um, bless wow. the Lamb of God. Very ambitious. Um, also very independent. And very religious. Will seem very spiritual. Uh, seems like knows everything just seems like oh my god is there anything you don't know about the spirit realm and you know all about this and all about that and uh, has an appearance uh, of very having great knowledge but in the end of the day absolutely does not uh, wear chastity does not wear the fruit of peace does not wear holiness and so the, the, there's the spirits that come with people and they must not be allowed to operate. They cannot be allowed to operate. And so when individuals, uh, you know, they don't want to be committed or serve in a church. They don't want to serve a leadership anywhere. Uh, they want to be run around and run around. And uh, you want to go from each church and tell leaders how they should run their church. That is a very strong spirit in operation prophets do not run around trying to tell every church leader what to do all right there's some orders to prophets but jezebel because it wants to appear spiritual uh will try to always gain attention and to gain a promotion somewhere so that it can also begin to speak and reduplicate itself the enemy loves to pervert god's people because he wants to try to stop the flow of the kingdom and the last thing is Jezebel hides, a very strong chameleon. So spotting the work of this spirit, it takes some times because it works in subtlety, works in darkness, works in secret meetings, will work in uh, private prayer meetings, uh, secret prayer meetings at the house. And uh, these prayer ah. meetings uh, will <laughs> not line up most of the time with the vision of the church or the God direction that pastors are trying to take the sheep into, uh, very counterproductive Jesus. to uh, leadership and uh, people who show up at these prayer meetings. Usually what ends up happening, they could have been very loyal to their pastor, mm. been very humble, uh, very giving, and they go to these prayer meetings and over a, few, a period of few weeks, their whole attitude and demeanor will change. Changes, they will yeah. become unsubmitted. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, will yeah, become yeah. restless. Uh, because Jezebel does not operate in shalom, does not, uh, remember the Bible says there is no rest for the wicked. Uh, so witchcraft is a wicked spirit. Come it on. does not rest. It's not satisfied. It's like hell. Hell is not satisfied. Mm -hmm. It enlarges its mouth yeah. to take a soul in. So when these spirits are operating, we like, we should be uh, having an appetite to win people uh, to the Lord, genuine, uh, born again, Holy Spirit filled experience, they are looking for proselytes, individuals to bring under its seduction because uh, they gain power over, and the more people they have in their, uh, if you will, 
the more power it's because they start pulling resource they'll even pull virtue they'll pull vitality they'll if you meet with a person that has a jezebel spirit they will talk so much that by the time they're done talking you will feel like the life has been sucked out of you <laughs> they are spiritual like vampires and they literally pull virtue strength and yeah. you're like you're yeah, like yeah, you yeah. feel like you have to just bathe yourself in anointing oil when you get done talking with somebody that has those type of spirits and so just like lust it consumes lust is a consuming uh it it looks for a prey uh, it looks for something to consume to uh, uh, fill its appetite, and that's how uh, this type of spirit operates. So, uh, if you know uh, those type of spirits, you know a person that operates in strong domination, manipulation, intimidation, control. One of the things you have to immediately begin. There is no uh, uh, slow. It's not like, uh, well, I wean myself off. Okay, you don't. You can't wean yourself. It's just like. Sinning, you there's you just don't wean yourself off of sin. There's just certain things you say, you know, I, I you got to go cut. You got to cut the tie, uh, because as long as uh, those spirits can influence or uh, have a contact with you, uh, they will continue to try to manipulate your emotions, your mind, uh, try to get you to uh, you know see them. I, I'm I am a good person. I'm not a bad person. You know. And you're like, well, you know. And and usually they have a lot of charisma, a lot of charm, but the wickedness that lies underneath is so strong that it it's just a contamination, and it's not harmony. It's not a, a God given unity where joy fills and life and love fills the atmosphere and a flow hap. It's it's like a a uh, very constricted, restricted flow, uh, very uh, robotic in mannerism, and uh, very it's a it becomes a very choppy relationship because it's what's happening is the emotions uh, with that person is becoming uh, you're on guard, you 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 know you don't know I'm uh, walking on eggshells. Uh, I don't know when you're gonna you know snap and rip my head off, and so. Um, God does not want those kind of things infiltrating, penetrating the church. And so as leaders, church leaders, we need to make sure uh, that we are uh, cutting those things off at the, uh, at the root. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to always offer room for repentance Amen. Uh, to individuals. But whenever anybody, you know, wants to... The Bible says... That if a person that calls is that calls himself a brother is in fornication, not even to eat with them. So, now, now why is that? Because there's high level of toxicity, perversion that comes in with a person, and it overturns. It starts to work like leaven, and it overturns the. It stirs the lust, stirs the flesh. So you start getting groupings of people struggling with their flesh it works its way into the church and mm -hmm. lust is always looking to see who can i prey on yep. holiness is looking to see who can i edify who can i build up mm -hmm. but lust is looking to see who can i i be a, who are, can you be my snack okay basically can can you be my lunch all right so hallelujah any questions thoughts The prey that people like, or that spirits like these prey on, um, people who have identity issues. Mm -hmm. They don't know their value. They don't know who they are. They don't know their worth. So someone with this spirit comes in, and and they have an eye for those who don't know who they Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And they collect people like these because they end up, like you said before, using what they have. And the people, because they don't know what they have, they, they become even more of a prey, more susceptible. Absolutely. And, and once again, it ties in with flattery. So it will use um, flattery. It will use a element of self, uh, of even false promotion or false promises to win the allegiance, uh, to give us a sense of self-worth to an individual uh, that had a feeling of no worth. Mm -hmm. And so once that addiction, it becomes an addiction. It's a very strong tie or bond uh, usually that is very difficult to break. Um, so you're absolutely 1,000% right on that. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this teaching today. And uh, one of the things I want to say is if you're listening online uh, and you know somebody, you know, moving in a strong Jezebel, seducing, people are falling, people are getting sick, uh, you know, because of this individual, you got to cut the tie. You got to cut the cord. You got to warn. All right. You got to uh, exhort, rebuke, admonish. Uh, don't be found if it's in your family. You know, you got to warn. Don't be, uh, you know, it's going to be a battle. If you're ever going to confront Jezebel, it is not going to be uh, a, an easy thing. But let me tell you, the best thing that can ever happen to your heart, your mind, and your spiritual life is to get rid of those spirits. Cast them out. Jesus cast out spirits. And I always say, if you can't cast a spirit out, you got to cast a person out. There's no, no two ways about it. Because when a person wants to operate demonically, uh, and they, they won't let go of those strongholds, uh, you'll find out they're operating in a way anyway. We're afraid to cut people out of the church. Hmm. But what we don't realize, they've already been cut out of the kingdom. And so that's why we, there's one thing that's going to be implemented back to the church uh, as the church is being restored is the word excommunication. That's right. We will have no problem with saying goodbye to you if you want to bring your pollution, your perversion, your idolatry, your fornication and your whatever other sicko ways that you don't want to let go of, uh, your your little your little uh, demon clusters. Well, we don't have a problem with saying goodbye to you. We're, we're, we welcome you, but let me tell you, let me tell you why Jesus and the teaching of excommunication was so important. In First Corinthians five, they put the man out for fornicating with his mother-in-law, which was his stepmom. I mean, I'm sorry, his his stepmom, his mother. Uh, stepmom and not his mother-in-law his mother stepmom okay so anyway they put him out mm -hmm. so for the destruction of the flesh for the preservation of the soul and one of the things we have to understand is excommunication when we put people out it's a picture it's a temporary picture but it is what heaven is going to do for eternity so it's with the understanding that when you get put out that conviction and you will be pierced in your heart because understanding that if this is how I'm treated on earth, some people say, well, that's cold. Well, it's the book. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Re reading Revelation. It says there's a whole bunch of people that will be on the outside of the gate. And so we as a church, not that we're perfect, but we should be really striving for perfection. Be perfect as I'm perfect. Be holy as I'm holy. And so God is raising up a holy generation that's saying, listen, we're just not going to tolerate that no more. And he's trying to spiritually equip a generation to have the fortitude, the endurance, perseverance, and the strength, and the authority to deal with certain types of spirits. And so if you don't want to let go of your spirits, well, you can hold on to them, but you just won't hold on to them here. So wherever you're going to hold on to them, so I'm sure you can find somebody that will let you, let you slither on in, but <laughs> you're going to slide on out. All right? So this, you gotta, you got to tell them goodbye, send them packing. Say, listen, not, not in like that commercial, not in my house. And so you gotta you gotta send them on their way, and don't feel bad about it. Do not. There comes a time you gotta cut your emotion off from it, thinking you're doing a bad thing. You don't know how many souls. If you're in the house of the Lord, and people want to fornicate, they want to do certain types of activities in the house of the Lord. Don't let that blood be on your hands. Tell them we will help you uh, if they want help. But you'll find out most of the time they will not submit. Uh, to an anointed leader they'll they'll seem like they're serving you as long as they have their way but the moment you actually give them real instruction you'll find out you got a fight on your hands and so you cannot allow those rebellious spirits those unclean spirits to remain unchallenged anymore so i encourage you today pray to god for strategy get yourself in a place where you can confront the enemy and begin to walk out the fullness of the call of God on your life and be a victorious Christian in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.